Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a simple tutorial on coding in MATLAB. Specifically, I'm going to be focused on vectorization versus loop. As you know, MATLAB is a matrix laboratory and to take advantage of this software, we have to do most of our operations in a vectorized form, which would help run our code faster. Let's get started and see how we could do that. As I said, this video is going to be a tutorial on coding basics in MATLAB and I'm going to be focused on vectorization versus loop. Many programming algorithms require iteration, that is the repetitive execution of a block of program statements. Similar to other programming languages, MATLAB also has built-in tools for iterative tasks in codes. The for loop is among the most useful MATLAB constructs to perform the repetitive tasks. The for loop looks something like this. So the task is done for n times. Experienced programmers who are concerned with producing compact and fast code try to avoid for loops wherever possible in their MATLAB codes. There is a reason for this. For loops have significant overhead in interpreted languages such as MATLAB which causes the program to slow down. One of the most important tips for producing efficient M files is to avoid for loops in favor of vectorized constructs. That is, to convert for loops into equivalent vector or matrix operations. Vectorization has important benefits beyond simply increasing speed of execution. It can lead to shorter and more readable MATLAB code. Furthermore, it expresses algorithms in terms of high-level constructs that are more appropriate for high-performance computing. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys some examples and see how we could vectorize some operations in MATLAB to make them run faster. Let's go to MATLAB and see how we could do that. So these are some of the examples that I'm going to be showing you guys. I have four examples to show you guys and hopefully these examples would give you some ideas as to how you could change your for loop operations into a vectorized operation. And in all of the example, I'm going to measure the time which MATLAB spends to go through that computation to show you guys how fast a vectorized operation is as opposed to a for loop operation. The first example is very easy. I'm just going to go through these for loops and calculate the sine of t for each t here. And I'm going to also be doing it using this vectorized operation. So let's run the first example and compare the time of the execution. Okay. You could see that the first time is for the for loop execution and it took this much. And the second one belongs to this one in which a vectorized operation has been done. And you could see that the time of the execution is way less than the first one. I'm also using keyboard which would allow me to run each section separately with my permission. So let's go down to the second example. In the second example, I'd like to find the negative values in the matrix and then replace them with one. This is the matrix that I'm going to be using. Let's, let me show you guys first the matrix here. Uh -huh. So this is the shape of the matrix. It's 3 by 8. And I'd like to find the negative values and then replace them with 1. The first method is using for loops. So we would go through all the elements of this matrix. And then anytime we came across a negative, we replace it with 1. Just like here. And then we're going to measure the time, tick, tock. But there is another way that is much simpler, which is using vectorized form. So this is all we have to do for the vectorized form. It's just, we have to say, find the elements that are negative and then replace them with one. And we're going to also compare the out two same output, but for one of which we are using for loop operation, and for the other we are using vectorized operation. Let's run this section and compare the time of the execution. So you could see that the outputs are both the same, but the for loops has taken this much time as opposed to the vectorized form which has taken this much time, which is less than the for loops. And you should pay attention that this matrix is not that big. If it's an image, it's going to take a lot longer time. So let's go to the next section. In this section, I'd like to do matrix multiplication in which I am multiplying a column vector with each column of a matrix. So this is the column vector, this is the matrix, and I'd like to multiply this column vector with each column of this matrix. Let's first show you guys the 
matrix and the column vector. I have to run them here. So this is A and this is B. So I'd like to multiply this column vector with each column of this matrix. The first thing is to use a for loop in which I would go through eight iteration and in which iteration I'm going to be multiplying this column vector by each column of this matrix. But then there is a much simpler method in which I could just use vectorized operations shown like this. All I have to do is just first use repmat to increase the size of the A so that it would have the same size as B. So this column vector is going to be replicated as a matrix the same size as this matrix and then each element is going to be multiplied by the B shown as here. So if I show you guys this thing, let me show you guys the output of this one. Now look at A. So now A has the same size as B. All I have to do is to just multiply each element of A by each element of B. So let's run and compare the time of the operation as well. So two same output using two different methods. The first one is for loops. The for loops has taken this much time and the second one is vectorized operation. And the vectorized operation has taken this much time. You could see that the vectorized operation has taken much less time as opposed to for loop operation. Let's go to the last one in which I'm going to do again matrix multiplication but I'm multiplying a few matrices with each other. Let me first clean the command window. Let me first run these matrices here. This is A, this is B, and this is C. Let me also make this bigger. So for this one, I'd like to multiply each element of A by each element of B. And then for the resultant matrix, I'd like to multiply each element of it by each element of this row from matrix C and then by each element of this row of matrix C and then by each element of this row in matrix C and then I'm going to sum them up separately. So I'm going to end up with three numbers. One more time, I'd like to multiply each element of this matrix by each element of this matrix and then I'd like to multiply each element of the resultant matrix by each element of the first row and then by each element of the second row and then by each element of the third row but then separately I'm going to sum them up so that I would have three values at the end. This is the first way that I could do it using for loops. I first multiply each element of A by B and then separately I would multiply them by each element of C in each row and then I would just sum them up using this method. But there is another way. I could first change B into a diagonal matrix. Let me show you guys how B would look like. So if I run B now, B is this diagonal matrix. So then after that, I would just multiply A by B and then I would multiply it by C transposed. And then the resultant D would be three values. Let's run this and then compare the time of execution. Okay, you could see that we have two same output but using two different methods. And the time of execution for the for loop is this one and then for the vectorized operation is this one. And you could see that the vectorized operation has consumed a lot less time as opposed to the for loop. So it's very important to know what we're going to do because vectorized operation consumes a lot less time but you have to also consider that the data here are not that big and when it comes to image it's going to be even bigger so the vectors operation would be even more important and that's about it thank you so much for watching this video I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it if you liked it I would appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends thank you so much and have a nice day